YouTube has made a lot of terrible updates to the platform over the years, but a few people out there have actually managed to turn this rotting dumpster fire into a viable game engine. So let me show you what I'm talking about. You probably already knew that YouTube has captions. You can click this button right here to turn on either auto-generated captions or captions that someone has manually put onto a video. But did you know that you can actually move these captions around on the screen? Well, you can. YouTube basically creates an invisible box within the video so that you can freely move the caption box around in with your mouse, or you can move it by tapping and then dragging on a touch screen. And I think the intended purpose of this feature is to let you move the text box out of the way in case something important in the video is being blocked by it. Uh, or I could imagine some scenarios where maybe someone is showing a YouTube video on a projector or a widescreen TV and then people in the back of say a classroom might not be able to see the captions that are usually on the bottom so then you move them up to the top of the screen so that people can see them. But if you apply some creativity to this YouTube caption feature like Firerama did, then you can actually create a variety of games. So I'm gonna go ahead and link their channel below so that you can check all of these out, but we're just gonna go through a couple of these. So this video right here is a survival game with lasers. And like it says right here, play on PC. So I'm not actually 100% sure if you're able to play this particular one on mobile or tablet. Um, so it tells you to pause and enable captions. and I already have captions enabled, so you're able to see this blue box. If I disable captions, you can't see it. So essentially, that blue box is a caption window. And of course, I can drag the blue box around. It looks like this is pretty much the hard limit of where I can move it to. It looks like the captions on my other video I was able to not move around as much. So maybe there's some setting within YouTube videos that you can change it. I personally haven't used any manual captions on my videos. I've just used the auto-generated ones. Um, but for as far as the game is concerned, we're supposed to keep it inside of, I think, this white square here. I think the idea is supposed to be that we're not supposed to touch white. Yeah, it just said here, restart if it touches white, and then we have to watch out for these lasers. So I guess we can touch the red part of the lasers, but when it creates that white beam, we're not supposed to be able to touch that. And of course you could pause the video. That's, that's another thing too, where maybe this is technically cheating. Um, so I guess you have to be careful not to accidentally cheat <laughs> or not to cheat on purpose. And it's playing some kind of background music. It could be possible that it is an auto-generated caption that's just saying music but is somehow modified to be a blue box. I'm not actually sure how you're able to uh, do this, but I thought it was a really interesting thing. Because obviously YouTube did not intend for this caption feature to be used this way. Oh, I think I'm going to get crushed. weird the box kind of snaps up if I let go of it or it does towards the bottom yeah like if I click down here and then let it go it slides back up for some reason I'm not sure what it's about so this thing stopped rotating oh it looks like I'm on the good side and kind of just chill out, don't gotta worry about that white box trying to go for me. Now the thing is, all this stuff in the background is actually part of the video. So like if you play this game, it's basically gonna be the same thing over and over again. So you could remember the patterns uh, and get really good at it. Like I've only played this one time through before recording. Um, and then this part, you have to control two independent text boxes and try to keep them inside of the yellow and make sure they don't get hit by the laser or get hit by this. So yeah, you pretty much get the idea of this game. Here's another game that was made just a couple of weeks ago, which is an interactive maze. So again, you're able to move this caption box around freely with your mouse, 
but this is also a 360 video. So you can move the field of view around with the WASD or the arrow keys. Uh, and you can also move it around by clicking in the video itself. So like if you click outside of the hitbox, which I think is this whole thing, yeah, it's kind of outlined with the uh, little white line here. So you click outside of that and it actually moves <laughs> like the whole map around. Um, so this is gonna be quite a bit more difficult because um, like you can move the box around pretty easily, but the thing is when you move the video around or well, I guess I would have just died there. So I'm supposed to restart. <laughs> Um, but if you move the field of view around, like if you WASD or you click and drag, it's kind of slidey. Like it doesn't, doesn't just, uh, stop immediately after you stop moving. So that makes it a little bit hard, but let's see if I can actually get this. Might be a little bit easier if I can scream. All right. So don't touch white, even though the box is white this time. So we want to try to stay ahead of that barrier thing that's coming for us. Oh, go down. I think the maze is changing. Oh, there's no way. <laughs> All right, one more time. I'm just going to keep playing through if I get hit. See, that's the thing about uh, this game and the other one is that it kind of relies on an honor system, right? <laughs> like you have to restart if you uh, get hit. Sort of like playing, um, I don't know, laser tag without a vest. I got hit there. there. <laughs> Just going to skip through. So I guess I'm supposed to hit like that little um, achievement square thing. Or wait, does that show up when I get hit? Does it know that I'm getting hit? I got to see, does that thing turn red as soon as I touch water? See, I didn't see anything show up that. Is this just up here? Oh, I think that's just up here. Yeah, and if you go down here, this is green. Yeah, so again, the um the whole background of this, like all the white stuff, and I think these colored stars are just part of the video too. And then this is the caption box only. I think so. Let me see. Is that how it works? Do these stars just fade in over time? I'm pretty sure they do. Somewhere over here. Yeah, so here's the red star. Star would be down here. Blue one. Back here somewhere. It's just the green one. Does it have to go around and then it turns blue? Oh, it does. Okay, so this star here. Basically, you're supposed to go all the way around and I guess get this bottom star down over and over again. Oh, okay. And then these are the different rankings for however long it takes you to finish it. Okay, so that's another interesting game. Okay, so for this game, I had to switch to a PC that has Windows on it because for whatever reason, I could not find the right font to get this star to render correctly on Linux. Uh, but this game is really interesting because there's actually some kind of win-loss logic that is programmed into it. So of course, you have to enable captions in order for the star to be visible or it will just be a white box if, like an empty white box instead of a filled in white box like this if the font isn't rendering correctly on your system. Uh, but anyway, you're supposed to hold on to the star and then you're supposed to place it down on these actions here. So jump in this case in order to make this jump over. And then you would put it over here on dash and then it's supposed to dash under this, uh, I guess, orange barrier here. And then bash is going to bash down this gray barrier. Now take a look at what happens if I don't actually put this star in the right place. So you saw that when I did do it, it showed up with kind of the bluish or turquoise, whatever box. But if I don't do anything, you get these red boxes that show up. So there's some kind of 
I guess, conditional logic here. I mean, I'm not entirely sure uh, how it works, but obviously there's some way that it can detect whether or not you selected the correct option. And then it shows you that uh, turquoise color if you show or if you selected the correct option and then it makes all those red boxes show up. I think along with the turquoise, if you select the wrong one, let's just uh, see right here. And now I have all three options showing up. Um, so we'll do bash, which is the wrong one. And it just gives me the red icon. Uh, let's try jump. It's supposed to be bash. And then once again, it just gives me the red icon. Um, so it doesn't restart you automatically, of course, like you still have to go back manually whenever you crash or you choose the wrong option. But that's really cool. Like, I wonder if this can be built upon because it can at the very least detect whether you chose the right option or not. So it's got sort of a binary logic to it, like true, false. So you might be able to expand that out to really make like a full on game out of the YouTube CAPTCHA system. <laughs> that would be really, really cool. You could probably expand this a bit to have some sort of a score so that it can keep track of how many times you actually have crashed into something. I wonder if there's actually a limit for how many um, how many objects you can have on the screen because you've got this star, of course, but then this here is also kind of like an object. And then hack is what you're supposed to choose when you can't get through something. Or, oh, it tells you right here, so you see. You choose hack for these kinds of obstacles. So we'll jump over this one. And I guess you could also speed up the playback to make it more difficult. I might actually try that. Let's see. Let's do 1.25 first. Uh, okay, I'm already choosing dash. That's the correct option. I think this one's bash, right? It's like the gray. Oh, and there's actually other sections. Okay, I didn't pay attention to this earlier that there's multiple sections. I think I gotta hack through this. It still shows the uh, red boxes sometimes though. I don't know why. Um, ah, crap. I was supposed to bash that, I think. This dash. Okay, so now I'm in section two. Oh my goodness, it's a lot faster. And then there's this at the top? What's, what's that about? Is it, oh, wait, I got a hack. Got a hack. Yes. Uh, dash. Wait. This is, this is really confusing. <laughs> I guess that's fixed. And then it kind of lines up with these other things. Oh, well. Anyway, you get the idea of this game, too. And you saw the idea here where it actually changes color depending on if you chose the right option down here with the star or not. Now, another similar kind of YouTube video that you probably have seen before are the choose your own adventure style ones, which are more on rails than the games that we just looked at, but they still use some of YouTube's features to do something pretty creative. In this case, it's the chapters function to create a storyline with multiple branches. So like here, we could press one or two to branch off in another direction. This would be where it takes us in the chapter as far as cop one. And then we can see what this guy ends up doing. Skip forward a bit, and then I guess it didn't work out. So we press cop two, and then we go down that path, so on and so forth. Now, there have been videos like this in the early days of YouTube. Um, oh, and then you can also press L when prompted. Like that's another option to, I think, fast forward the video a bit. Let's see where he tells us to press L. At the perfect time, yeah. So this is much more interactive than what we had back in the day because back then you used to be able to put a lot of different links inside of a video, like a YouTube video that could link to other videos, but you had to break up this whole storyline into several different videos and just link to them and create a bunch of branches. So I guess it could get really messy and you'd also end up creating a whole bunch of videos on your channel. So maybe that messes up the feed or the algorithm or something like that. But I think that this is so much cooler. Like it lets you condense the videos down quite a bit more. I think you've got at least 10 chapters per YouTube video. Uh, or yeah, I guess this is technically chapter zero. So yeah, 10 chapters per YouTube video 
pretty cool concept. So yeah, check out these channels if you want to watch or play these interactive videos. Links to them will be down in the video's description. Like and share this video to hack the algorithm and check out my online store, based.win, where you can buy my awesome merch or accessories for your phone or laptop. 10% discount when you pay with Monero XMR at checkout. Have a great rest of your day.